Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to the World Below. Now we're going to take a brief detour, a side passage if you will, away from the callings for a moment. We will return with the Holy and the Hunter in due course, but for the time being we're going to be talking about system. Because a few people have asked me, or they've said, we love hearing about the callings in the world below, but how do we play this game? Or words to that effect. And I could have responded to them in the comments on the YouTube videos, but instead I think it's worth making a YouTube video all of its own to explain. Not least because there are some people who really don't get on with reading rules in a rule book, but they do appreciate someone explaining to them like this. So I will explain it in the simplest way possible now. The Story Path Ultra system is the system that the world below uses to govern whether you succeed or fail at challenges in this game. The Story Path Ultra system is a D10 dice pool system. What does that mean? Well, a dice pool is the number of dice you have in your hand, and the d10 is a ten-sided die, such as the one I'm holding up right now. A d10 looks a little like a diamond, and if you're listening to this on podcast, you're not going to gain the full benefit of the visual here, but you can take my word for it that that's what I'm holding. So, you roll your dice to see whether you succeed or fail. But how many dice do you roll? A character is built up of skills and attributes. Skills are rated 0 to 5. You may be untrained in a skill, or you may be a master, all the way up to 5 dots in that skill. Attributes are more like natural abilities, whereas skills are trained, attributes are natural, and they range from 1 to 5. These are things like your raw strength, your raw intellect, your uh, wits, that kind of thing. Now, you'll note, attributes start at 1, skills start at 0. And the reason for that is because you will never, ever be in a position where you roll zero dice. With a one and an attribute, you will always roll at least one. So, as an example, athletics is a skill. Dexterity is an attribute. If I'm trying to run away from something, I will look at how many dots I have in athletics, let's say two, and I'll look at how many I have in dexterity, let's say three. And that means I will have five dice to roll to see whether I'm successful or not at running away from the thing chasing me. Nice and simple. But how do I know what is a success and what is a failure? Well, you look at your dice and any eights, nines or tens are hit. You want hits. Hits determine how successful you are. So in the case that I have just rolled, while you can't see it, I can reliably inform you that I rolled a 7, that's not a hit. I rolled a 2, that's not a hit. I rolled a 5, that is also not a hit. But I rolled an 8, that is one hit. 8s count for one hit, 9s count for one hit, 10s count for two hits. So 10s are doubly impressive. In some cases, let's say my character is uh, rummaging through a library trying to find a map from Crystal City to Erehulk, one of the settlements in the world below. And let's say the library is well sorted. The difficulty is only one. That means I only need to get one hit in order to succeed. So in the example of my dice pool just there, uh, I have got one hit, which means I succeed at what I'm trying to do. I would probably roll enigmas plus intellect to navigate this library. If I had that many dice, that is what I would get. So, let's put another example out there. Let's increase the difficulty. Why might a difficulty increase? Well, taking the library example, let's say it's in the middle of a settlement that was recently mobbed by Arachnida, and many of the buildings were toppled, set on fire, people ran into them or from them. The place is chaos. And I'm rummaging through this library, desperately trying to find this map before everything is plunged into uh, damnation and inferno. And so the difficulty this time is, I'm going to be a bit harsh on myself and say the difficulty is three. Difficulties rarely range higher than five. Three is still pretty damn tough. I need to get three eights, nines, or tens. Bear in mind, tens count for two hits in order to find this map I'm looking for. So I only had four dice originally, if you recall. I had two in enigmas, two in intellect. The odds aren't in my favour, are they? Still, I can roll and see how many 8s, 9s, and 10s I get, but I don't think I'm going to succeed. This is where something called enhancement can come in to help you. 
In the Story Path Ultra system and in the world below, characters can benefit from enhancement. Enhancement can be anything from having a really sharp sword when you're trying to stab someone. That gives you an enhancement. Having climbing gear when trying to climb up the sheer wall of a chasm. That gives you an enhancement. Knowing someone who you're trying to persuade. Let's say they already trust you. That therefore makes them more persuadable or amenable. That gives you an enhancement. All of these things can give you enhancements, and those enhancements tend to range from a value of 1 to 3. They can go higher. 1 to 3 is pretty standard. So, I'm in this library. It's a complete state. The difficulty is 3. I only have 4 dice to roll. And in this case, let's say I'm a member of the guild that built this library. In the world below, everyone's a member of a guild. So uh, let's say it's a Union of Cartographers and Stratigraphers Library. What I will say to the story guide is, well, I'm a Unioner. It's on my character sheet. I know how they sort their libraries. I think I can navigate this despite the chaos within it. The story guide will say, that's a really good idea. Have plus one enhancement. Okay, what does that enhancement do? It doesn't give you an extra die, it doesn't give you a guaranteed success, but what it does do is, when we look at our dice roll, let's say I'm rolling four dice now. Okay, that's a decent roll. I get a two, a two, an eight, and an eight. So I roll two hits, but the difficulty was three. Luckily, I have an enhancement of plus one. Now I succeed. The enhancement only comes into effect if I get one or more hits. You have to get at least one hit in order for an enhancement to apply. Now, enhancements can come in all kinds of forms and, again, all kinds of values. Maybe I was the person that sorted this library in the first place. Maybe I know exactly where this map was before the library was hit. Maybe I know what the map looks like. Whatever the case, all these things can add enhancement, and it's up to the player quite often to negotiate it or explain it to the story guide for why their character is due an enhancement. That's how enhancements work. You apply them after you roll because you need to determine, first of all, have I scored a hit? If you don't score a hit, you don't get the benefit of an enhancement. Now I'm going to complicate things because complications are the inverse, if you like, of enhancements. Complications do not add difficulty. Complications do not make your life worse. Complications do not make you less likely to succeed. But complications can make a story very interesting and complicated. Usually in an interesting way. So our character is rummaging through this library. There's been an Arachnida assault. There's blood. There's people have run everywhere. There's people hiding in corners. You're desperately trying to find this map before the next wave of the assault comes. And so you're picking through all this refuse. The story guide says, I'm going to add a moderate complication to this challenge. That moderate complication is, if you fail to buy off the complication, along with the difficulty... There's an arachnida hidden underneath some of this vellum. And when you move it, it's going to jump up at you. You see, complications are rated 1 to 3 as well. Minor, moderate, major. And these complications, you can buy off the difficulty. You can find the map. But if you don't buy off the complication as well, something complicated, well, something will happen to complicate your life. That could be something like an arachnida jumping out. That could be something like, oh, the sunflies suddenly leave the library for some reason. They've been spooked. It's pitch black now. You've got the map in your hand, but you can't see anything. It could be the assault starts right now. All of these things may be different value of complication. I'd suggest being plunged into darkness is a minor complication. Having an arachnida jump out at you is a moderate complication. Having a full-on arachnida assault on your settlement is a major complication. If you, the player, are able to roll enough hits to buy off both the difficulty and the complication, none of that happens. You find the map, all the complications are bought off, and therefore you are scot-free. That is considered a complete success. So that is the Story Path Ultra system. You're trying to get eights, nines, and tens in order to hit a difficulty which ranges from one, typically to three, sometimes it can go a bit higher. Every eight, nine, or ten is going to count towards hits that ultimately lead, hopefully, to success.
You can have enhancements from things like equipment and personal knowledge or relationships or training, and those enhancements will add to your hits as long as you scored one already. Complications will not add to difficulty, but will add complications to the narrative. They will make things happen that hopefully keep the game interesting, because we don't want heroes that are always succeeding with a plum and no, <laughs> no complexities added to their lives. That's it. That's the Story Path Ultra system. Now, in the next video, what we're going to go into a little more is what you can do with additional hits. If you, for instance, have a massive dice pool of eight and you only had to get a difficulty of one in order to succeed, and let's say you roll four hits, well, you've now got three dice that uh, aren't doing anything, but they can do something. You can buy something called Trick. And we will get on to that in our next video. But until then, thank you very much for watching and or listening uh, to this rundown of what the Story Path Ultra system is. You now know how to play the world below in 10 minutes. Thank you very much.